Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Before I came to Abuja, I, I was into Texas. So at a point, I needed a change of business. Then it started in a dream, a walk in the garden 14 years ago. I saw myself planting flowers. Somebody was telling me the names of the plants and so on. So when I woke up from that dream, I said, how do I go about this? I've never been, I've never even been a good farmer. I've never done things like this before. I've never even gone to a garden to buy a plant before. I was not a plant lover, actually. How do I go about this? It is said, when there is a will, there is a way. She said, Madam, if you want to do this business, don't go and look for millions of naira. Just go to your backyard, get flowers. Start nursing them from your backyard. From there, start looking for markets on how you can sell them. And that was how I started. But this one, when this one is dying, do it this way. I say, fine. So when I'm around him, there's a way he makes sales. At times, when he's not around, I'll make sales for him. When he comes, I say, hey, auntie, how did you sell this plenty money now, now? I say, don't worry. I know there's something I will call favor that follows me. I say, okay. So it's okay. Since you are like this, eh, I'm ready to teach you everything. So I was with him here, here in this garden. But it was small, it was a small portion then. So I'll come every day, I'll resume here. So we kept on until one day he said his people said that he should come home, that he wants to leave the business. He wants to sell the business, sell the garden to me. I said, where do I have such money? How much were we talking about? It was not even up to what I needed then was like 50 something thousand. Soon. It became a family business with a daughter going ahead to study medicinal plants at master's level. In fact, if you give me a paper, say write the list of business you think you will do in this life before you die, this thing will not even be on my list. But somehow I just find myself doing it. And I began to love plants. <laughs> so at a point I now called my children and said, look, oh, let's, let's see how we can do this thing together. Now I don't have money to employ workers. Let's be doing it ourselves. My daughter will go out and look for cellophane leathers to bring, to plant. There was a day she came back. She said, Mommy, say people were calling her Ayambola. I said, Don't worry. It's just for some time. So she will pick the leathers. This same girl I'm talking about today, she, she has graduated as a plant scientist. While businesses experienced downturn as a result of the pandemic, hers was different. People were coming from, for our herbs. Because we have medicinal plants, uh -huh. we have plants we grow here, we have the strawberry, we have other plants, edible spices, fresh spices we sell. So people must eat. So at that point, people were even calling us from the house. They need so so spices, so they want to do this, they want to take their tea, uh -huh. they want to. So we're still selling, even at lockdown. She says some of the rare species are from seeds imported which is capital intensive. And with her everyday expansion of customer base through referrals, coupled with presence on various social media platforms, she says more capital is required to sustain supply. Especially this medicinal plant, we send them to every part of the country. So if we have access to loan, we'll be able to buy more of these seeds, we'll be able to buy more containers because you need to plant them in their containers. So we'll be able to buy more of these things and expand. As her garden puts food on the family table, Mrs. Omo is determined to initiate many into the business by creating jobs on her garden and annually engaging school pupils in the practice of gardening. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria.